recording here so far. Uh, but, Kath, we have a great guest. Who do we have? Oh, back, welcoming back to the show, Wolf Richter of Wolf Street. He, uh, he's been covering all sorts of things this past week. Uh, and if you uh, visit his site, and I recommend you do, uh, junk bonds, China, freight indexes, capacity, oil. Oh, my God, it's a, it's a mess. Uh, you can find uh, Wolf stuff at wolfstreet.com. You can follow Wolf on Twitter at, at Wolf of Wolf Street. That's S-T. And uh, welcome back to the show, Wolf. So glad you could join us at the god-awful 5 a.m. Pacific time. Yes. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm always uh, happy to be back. Uh, I noticed that you were busy yesterday. You put up at least two more articles on your site uh, on the Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah. it's kind of a special day <laughs> for, for uh, what we report on. Uh, you know, we had a uh, junk bond fund blow up yesterday, and we've been reporting on the risks of junk bonds and particularly the risk of bond funds, uh, open-end bond funds. Uh, and yesterday it happened, and it surprised us. You know, the, the crisis uh, the, hasn't even really started yet, the bond crisis that we think we're going to run into. And, and bam, that's the first blow-up of a fund, and investors are stuck, uh, can't get the money out. The fund has already lost 20% of, of its value. And uh, and so now uh, we're back where we were during the early parts of the financial crisis. Can you tell us a little bit on this particular bond that blew up? Well, it was a bond fund. So it was a, a, a fund that uh, called Focus Credit Fund uh, managed by Third Avenue. And uh, it had, the, that fund had uh, about $2.5 billion in assets earlier this year. And so it started losing money. And on a number of uh, bonds that it had, uh, you know, they were going sour on them. It's bond funds, uh, you know, they've picked up the riskiest bonds, and and, and bonds, uh, many of them have, have crashed. And so investors figured that out, and, and they started selling. And what and that's a, a really a treacherous thing. That's what bond funds really uh, cause a lot of problems. When you own the... The bonds outright. You, you're you're an investor, and you think uh, junk bonds are the way to go, and that's that's a legitimate investment. Junk bonds, they're high risk, uh, high yield investments. They're called high yield for a reason. I mean, they're 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 not high yield right now because we're in a kind of an artificial interest rate environment. But uh, you know, some of the uh, the better junk bonds still yield about eight percent. And that's not bad. You know, some of the worst ones, uh, worst junk bonds, they yield much more. I mean, you're looking at 19, 20%, and you may never get your money back on those. Uh, but it's legitimate. It's a legitimate investment uh, to buy these bonds and to hope uh, for cents on the dollar and to hope that things will turn around, that the, the company will survive, and uh, that you can hold these bonds to maturity and, and make a ton of money. A bond fund doesn't give you the privilege. A bond fund, when people start selling, has to sell these bonds at whatever the market bears. And, and uh, uh, so now when, they're, when there's forced selling going on, when, when investors are starting to redeem, uh, when the redemptions are flowing in and investors want the money back, you know, they, they have to essentially liquidate that bond fund at the worst possible moment. And uh, and then you have hedge funds lining up against you there, and they're shorting those very same bonds that the bond fund has to sell, and it turns into it turns into carnage. And uh, the the losing entities are the bond fund holders, uh, who actually have no clue that this is happening. A lot of times, you know, they're on vacation or they they have it in the retirement fund. They wake up one day and they can't get the money out, and they look, and the bond fund has dropped in value a bunch, and so you know. This is the difference between a bond fund and owning the bonds outright. And open-end bond funds are very risky. They're, they're, they're sold as conservative investments, but they're, they're full of explosives, as I call them. And, and when there's a run, they'll get torn up. Well, if I have, uh, and that's what happens. I won't, I won't use the term pushback, but I'm going to add a little bit. Uh, and I have to ask a question, because you're closer to this than I am. I, the, the bond market... For for the PTI securities, we obviously we are licensed and everything to do bonds. And once in a while, you know, a client will bring in a bond and we'll try and sell it for them or something. And uh, you know, we try and do a pretty good job. But I'll tell you what, the bond markets are horrible. Just just not, just right. not a good day. I mean, they're, they're nothing like the stock market or anything. But it's, it's it's the old it's the old wild wild west. You try and sell them, and whoever you're selling them through puts an offer, and if he gets filled, then he 
He trades with you at a worse price. I mean, it's it's like the over the counter market was when I started the business in '81. I mean, it's it's horrible. I mean, it, so I mean, if if you're in the business, you you realize that th- there really isn't a market for this stuff. And if like you say, most of the bonds, even from like a like the Chicago Public Schools or something bizarre like that, the people who buy them are going to be like an insurance company that's going to just hold them for the 30 years. They they have no intention right. of ever trying to sell them because who are you going to sell them to? I mean, it, I mean, there, there's no real depth of liquidity in any of these bond markets I mean, that, that anybody would ever, you know, say there is because there isn't. And now the other part of it is when you mention the junk bond, um, if you do the math and the guy, uh, the guy who invented these things or invented how to trade them. I always forget his name. The guy who went to jail with the, two, with the bad toupee. Uh, Milken? Uh, Milken. Thanks, Kev. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 uh, I mean, the idea was if you've got a risk-free rate is 3% and you have a, a junk bond trading uh, what they used to be in those days, Wolf, which I, you already know, so I'm, I'm, it were like 11 or 12%. If you do the math, if you bought 20 of them and one or two went under, you still were even with the game. Right. Well, when you start getting into this absurd risk-free thing that the Fed has put us in, where your junk bond is 8% or 7%, if you do the math, you better you, you can't even really afford to lose 1 out of 20. Or right. you're, or you're, and, and they were 5%. Yeah, they, they were, were 5%. Using 5% a year ago. So, they, so people and, never were getting the money that they should for the risk they yeah. were taking, I think. Right. So what I'm, I'm, but my question to you is, I mean, you've been on the show before, and you and I have talked about this, and... I'm not going to say either one of us is predictive, but when you have a crash like 2007, 2008, because of over because of too much debt, and the solution is even more debt, I think you and I probably would have said that the that the carnage is not quite over; it's going to happen again. But my question to you is: I've been saying that for seven years. I've been wrong, well, at least way too early for seven years. What happened? We're now December. What happened? July, August of this year. All of a sudden, this, start, this stuff is coming home to roost. Because it is. I mean, but is it the oil? Is it, is it something else I'm not seeing? Is it just too much debt from an emerging market? Is it the dollar move? But something, something shook us up to where this is now happening, when it could just as easily have happened a year ago or two years ago and didn't. Well, now remember that a year ago, uh, in November, December, especially in December, uh, chunk bonds crashed. And those... Uh, yeah, and those were really limited to energy junk bonds, and they they took down the overall averages. But uh, when you looked at the energy junk bonds at that time, they really crashed. I mean, they were in serious trouble. And then yeah, a bunch of private equity firms and hedge funds moved in and started buying those, and there was a rally in these energy bonds. And uh, and yeah, earlier this year, and then there, there were the ups and downs. You know, and overall, the energy bonds have performed terrible since then, and uh, they're in real trouble. What happened uh, this summer is that some of this seriously bled over into other sectors. And you had Valiant. And Valiant is a, is, is a, uh, a chunk-rated company, and, and it's one of the biggest uh, uh, junk bond issues out there, and they used it for M&A and for all kinds of things. You know? And they ran into trouble that weren't related to bonds. They were, you know, they're being looked at by the government. They ran into all kinds of other issues. And now their bonds have, have sold off. And that, that weighs heavily. And then there are a bunch of other companies outside of the energy sector, uh, whose bonds have sold off. And, uh, you know, we've had a whole bunch of defaults, uh, and bankruptcies. Uh, you know, and, and so, it is, uh, and only part of them are in energy and mining and metals, and the rest of them are, and there's retail, there's all kinds of things. You know. So this is what's happening now. It's bleeding over into the broader market, and when that starts, you know, investors are opening their eyes, and maybe that's what you're referring to, what happened this summer. What happened is people are starting to open their eyes, and they're looking at this, and they're saying, hey, they're risking this. I want to be paid for this, or I'm getting out. And uh, that's a that's the end of the credit cycle when that happens. When people demand to be compensated for risk, uh, as they should, you know, then then the easy money for a lot of these issues uh, is gone. Well, they should have and been then, demanding. Yeah. When when do we? Uh, so you're saying that the dominoes, the first few that maybe nobody looked at, have been dropping now for about a year, somewhat steadily, is what you're saying. Well, well the energy bonds have been. Uh, they have they've gotten slaughtered. 
Okay. You know, many of them trade for 40, 50 cents on the dollar, 30 cents but, but on the dollar. People felt that people felt and, that was contained, and, you, and now you're saying it really wasn't contained. Yeah, it it, it was contained until it, until it wasn't. Okay. And, <laughs> that, well, that makes sense. <laughs> I'm with you on that. It looked like it was contained, and oops, it yeah. was a leak. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, I mean, we go through that every time we have a major problem. Yeah, it's contained until it isn't. And housing was the same thing and during the financial crisis. You know, I mean, yeah, it's no big deal. It's just one sector, and then, bam, it hits another sector. Wolf, when we come back from, uh, you, you can stay through one more one more segment, I hope? Oh, sure. Uh, when Absolutely. we come back, it's, uh, I guess it's most uh, most of the people uh, who listen, I, I won't say, maybe are more interested when is this going to go? David Andelman is on a couple of days a week, and all he talks about is how people have been degrading these these pristine balance sheets aren't so pristine anymore. They've done nothing but but buy you know go out and buy get bonds to uh, buy stock now at a seemingly higher prices. I mean, IBM bought so much at 160, and now it's 130. That type of thing. Uh, see when you think the domino is going to start hitting the stocks. Uh, we'll talk about that with the Wolf. Uh, my question is: uh, There's always a question of containment in, the, in these things. I mean. I'm I'm a, I'm a guy that uh, sort of lived through the '87 crash, and to this day I can't tell you why it didn't happen a week before or a week after when I would have been in much better shape. Uh, why it had happened on a Friday with expiration between Friday and Monday morning, and I, I but I mean everything that was in place to happen it could just easily have happened in August or July or any time, or or a week later. What, when these things start, I mean, when when you're, the things you're talking about, to be perfectly honest, I feel her like a dodo bird because. I haven't noticed as much. You've been on, and I've read some of your stuff, so I guess I'm somewhat up on it, but I'm still not putting two and two together that we already are three, four, five dominoes into this mess. How are we going to figure out whether it, it, it does become contained or whether one day somebody walks out and says, hey, you, you big dummy, what are you doing buying this Chipotle at, that was up 28 hours yesterday? They're not making any money. Is any... Is any anywhere near as much as they should be making for a $500 stock price. By the way, they can't figure out how to wash their lettuce. What are you doing? I mean, this thing could be ton of hours. I mean, when is this, when or if, is this going to, the dominoes start to go a little faster and catch a bunch of people? Well, you know, you can't predict crashes. And uh, I don't predict crashes. You know, that's, uh, that's a fool's errand. Uh, they happen by surprise and if you could predict them accurately, that wouldn't happen. Or that happen a lot sooner. If everybody predicts them, that happen on the spot, you know. So, uh, at the same time, we have some fundamental issues that are not that hard to see, and we can, uh, predict, uh, how they will impact other things. And so, for example, uh, that's why, uh, junk bonds generally lead stocks in the moves. We have a credit cycle. Uh, you have very low interest rates, uh, companies, chunk rated companies. Chunk rated means, uh, a company that's rated BB or lower, you know. So they're, they're, they're good companies that just have a lot of debt and they may not have, uh, a lot of, uh, cash flow to cover that debt. So, uh, you know, and they're operating and they have legitimate businesses. And so they can borrow money, no questions asked, during the peak of the credit cycle. And then when that credit cycle ends, when people or investors are asking more questions and they're wanting to be compensated for risk, they lose access to the credit markets. And suddenly they can't borrow money anymore. They can't borrow cheaply anymore. Now they have to pay 10% or 12% or 15% or more, and and their business model is no longer uh, viable. And you got to remember what happens with the, mon- the funds raised by selling junk bonds. It's used to cover uh, negative cash flows, and that's the that's the case in the drilling business. Uh, so these these companies have had negative cash flows, some of them from day one, and they need new money just to operate. Uh, and it's uh, it's happening to to fund M and A. Uh, that's that's M and A has been a huge boom, and Valen is one of those cases. They're they're you know they're selling junk bonds. Uh, to buy other companies with them, and and uh, so now that their the bonds are trading down, they're having a harder time um, uh, selling those bonds at a reasonable rate, and now they're having a hard time after that uh, trying to fund any M and A. And suddenly, you, when the M and A boom gets hit by a chunk bond decline, uh, you have a direct impact on the stock market. And, you know, there's, there's been uh, record M&A activity this year, 
and uh, uh, that pushes up stock prices. When that gets curtailed, that has a negative impact on, directly on the stock market. Then a lot of companies raised uh, uh, money via chunk bond offerings to uh, pay dividends and uh, to do share buybacks. And both of those have uh, direct impact on, on stocks. So this is, this is, these are some of the mechanisms by which uh, a chunk bond market route leads over into, lo- over the longer term into the stock market. It doesn't happen overnight. The, the link isn't like this happens today and then tomorrow this happens in stocks. The link is spread out, but there, but there is a very strong link between these high yield bonds and, and stocks. Well, is there ever any, I mean, we, we, we talk about or, or the system is set up and whoever designed you know, the corporation back in the day. Uh, when the corporations were invented, what, 1864, somewhere there? Well, they were joint stock companies before that, so right. they've been around for a wasn't, few hundred wasn't, years. Wasn't the first real, real corporation in the Union Pacific? Uh, I guess you're talking about the first modern yeah. corporation? Anyway, but I don't know the answer. What I'm saying is, is, is we, we have these board of directors who are supposed to be people that um, mm-hmm. manage not only the firm, but the firm's relationship with society and everything else. I mean, they're supposed to be like, you know, regular, uh, I guess the Yiddish term would be the minches that you put on top of these places. It, if if we go down in the market here and, and we don't get anywhere for the next couple of years, which I hope doesn't happen, but is there going to be any blowback to these guys that bought all these stock, all this stock back in the open market at prices that are ridiculously high looking where they are right now? I mean, uh, I... I mean, are, are we going to fire half the IBM board for buying all the stock back at 160 when it's trading 130? I mean, is, is there, is, 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 can any of these guys ever, can they screw up bad enough where they ever get tossed out? Well, I, I, <laughs> and there will be some individual cases, I think, where you'll see a little bit of that. Uh, but generally speaking, when the whole industry does it, when, you know, all of corporate America does the same thing, you're not going to punish individuals for that. And so IBM was doing what everybody else is doing. IBM was on the forefront, but they're, you know, they were they were doing the same thing. And they're, and IBM is making money, so they're they're in a better position than some of these other companies, you know. So, uh, but they're spending a lot more on uh, buybacks than they're making, and and so they have to raise money. Uh, and they're, they're also heavily involved in M and A, you know. So they're doing all of this: so dividends, buybacks, M and A, and so they don't have enough. Uh, Cash flow to fund these things, and they have to raise money. Uh, you know, and to, they have to borrow money to to buy back these shares. So they have really leveraged up their balance sheet. And what can happen is that IBM will get downgraded over time, uh, and then suddenly, you know, they they can't raise money that easily. And and then when the credit cycle turns on them, it's getting even harder, and they have to stop all these activities and. Uh, yeah, and they'll they'll bring in a turnaround specialist, and they'll do more layoffs and those kind of things. But they're all doing it, so I don't think there will be individuals held responsible for that. I mean, it's an, it's a it's what corporate America was supposed to do uh, after the financial crisis. The Fed told them to do that. They, you know, lower the interest rates. Uh, you know, take risk, go out there, uh, and you know, borrow lots of money and invest it in financial products and other things and. And they've done that for seven years, and now the cycle's turning on them. And, well, and guys... I don't think we're going to fire lots of people for that. I only would like to see that. But, you know, if, you, if during the past seven years you were a CEO and you refused to do that, you probably would have lost your job by now. Well, it, it, the, the, I guess what I'm saying is these guys get paid astronomical amounts of money to have a singular in, uh, intellect somewhere between Job and Solomon. When it comes right down to it, they're nothing more than the thundering herd, and do what everybody else does, and and as long as you do, you're okay. Somehow, right. somehow there's a disconnect <laughs> there. I mean, I'm just saying, you know. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, but that's how that's how it works. You know, and same with with uh, hedge funds and others. All you have to do is beat the market. If the market's losing twenty percent and you lose eighteen percent, you're fine. <laughs> you know what? Oh, though? that's an excellent point. You know what though? I, I with my clients, I never felt that way. If they lost money somehow, I mean, uh, that's why I protect everything. I never, I, I could never have that conversation. Well, if I'm, I'm just too south side, I could never say, well, if you gave me, you gave me a mill, there's eight hundred thousand left. But guess what? If you give it to somebody else, you'd have seven ninety. I did a good job. I could never do that. Yeah, <laughs> and, and yeah, market downturns are really tough uh, for the, the whole industry, and uh, because you're like, like you're saying, you know, you want to do a good job, uh, but 
you know, there are limits as to how you can warn your clients and you can't put them, you know, you, you can't go out there and say, you pull out your money. Well, you're either, protected or, yeah, you're either protected or you're not. Uh, real quick, you have 30 seconds. How, how can we tell if the bond market is, if the carnage is starting to get better instead of worse? I mean, what, what would be the science? Did they start to firm up a little bit? Well, keep your eyes glued on the junk bond market. I mean, that's the harbinger. Uh, that's where the action always is. Uh, high grade bonds will not get in trouble anytime soon. Uh, if you look at them, there's not going to be a lot of movement. Rolf, but we got to uh, break, but we're going we're to put you up on the website. People can get to you. Thank you very much. As usual, terrific. Well, we'll thank you, you for back. having me. You're great. Well, thanks. Yes. SP Futures down 1850. We haven't come back at all here. Dow Futures down 181.